if we posit reality, the world, as the positive, the one, no matter how much of it we can perceive, then the rejection and or the denial of this positive is its nullification of the nil, of the negative, the zero. In this case, positive or one indicates what is present and perceived rather than what is imagined and hypothesized and theoretical and symbolized. I say one tree, but the tree is never stable. It is never the same one every time I use a symbol, the verbal term, to refer to it. It is not a being, it is a becoming. That's why we can use tree to refer to any tree, because it is a symbol. The symbol of one also indicates a complete and total perception of what is, which is impossible. So by saying one, we mean the approach towards, the direction to, the motive. Up to now, a reversal has been in play. A false reality has been presented as the positive. For example, when where there is change normally occurring, a static thing has been presented as the positive. And the one, in this case, being mistaken as the abstraction of reality and taken literally as a singularity. In other words, as what is real. Where there is imperfection, and precision, degrees of certainty, a gnosis, a, an absolute, has been put in its place. The one has been presented as the already known, the already decided upon, the destination already reached. Even in the sciences, this search for the elusive absolute state, the particle, the absolute zero temperature, the absolute point of departure, as in Big Bang, uh, the absolute moral, the transcendental law has been taken for granted. Man's simplifications, abstractions, and the symbols, words he invented to express and share them are now the positive. The direction towards is now presented as the already attained, leaving a backwards direction to justify it. This is the essence of nihilism. It's backwards motion, it's regression presented as, as a progression. And uh, naturally, what stands as the negative in relation to that would be uh, the real. The absence of an absolute, in other words. The absence of meaning, of purpose. The absence of a telios. Uh, the perfect, the final the singular, the beginning and end, the good and the bad, God and Satan, and so on. This is why in the Bible, the word comes first. And the word is not bird by any means, but yes, it is God. The concept makes sense only if you take the term, the symbol, literally as a static beginning and end an anthropomorphic representation of what is absent in reality, in other words, the absolute. This is why we live in an age of nihilism and within false dichotomies and within erroneous premises. It takes a particularly sophisticated brain to begin to think outside these on-off binary switches, these binary mechanisms. This is why nihilism comes easy to the dull and the dim and why it is so pervasive and popular and dominating in our time. Also in our time, in this time of reversals, all is turned on its head, all is reversed. The concept of nihilism is now associated with the denial that there is an absolute, an absolute meaning, an absolute purpose, an absolute morality, and so on. In other words, the real is now made into the nil, and the denial of the real is the new positive. This is so natural because reproduction has permitted inferior brains to multiply. We call this the gen this genics. And it is so perva pervasive that it now infects every aspect of human thinking. The real, as a state of flux, as a state of fluidity, as a state of constant interactivity.
has now been replaced by the methods the brain evolved to conceptualize this flux into things, into positions in space-time, into ideas, into absolutes, by simplifying and generalizing fluidity, fluidity into four-dimensional representation, which can go by, by any name, such as thing, object, here, now, self, being, God, and so on. This is because the human mind is still in its infancy, and most brains, having been born within an environment of sheltering, where any Tom, Dick, and Harry has been given the right, and has been protected from his own stupidity, to reproduce his inferior brain by using another retard who cannot tell the difference between superior and inferior or has been infected with the cultural norm where such value judgments are considered sinful. The human fabrications of morality and monogamy, as they've been applied so far, also contribute to this propagation of lower level levels of brain power. Females who are meant to be natural filtering mechanisms have now been directed to serve as social filtering mechanisms, choosing mimetically whatever the man-made system trains them from birth to consider preferable. And when this uh, man-made system is controlled by nihilistic motive, then these females become agencies of nihilism. It is easy to understand why the method has been misconstrued for the actual fact. When one takes into account the previous, previously mentioned social and cultural circumstances. Along with them, we should also keep in mind that such brains, so dependent on sheltering to come about and to persevere and to remain valuable, would also show an inclination towards despising anything and anyone who exposes them to a truth they cannot fully understand nor accept without putting their own existence into question. And so hate bubbles up in their psyche. And in order to deal with this hate, which has been also defined as sinful and wrong by the very mean that controls them, it is projected upon the one exposing them to a reality they can't tolerate. Therefore, the one presenting a reality they can't take, they can't accept, is the one who hates. The motive the sensation of hate which they feel towards themselves, towards reality, is now projected upon the other, and the other is given this as a motive. What is ironic is that the very brain, so dependent on superficial appearances, can also be trained and convinced, because this is also sheltered, this also sheltered them from uh, reality of the world, that appearances do not matter. You have a double self-delusion happening here. We have a double uh, detachment occurring here, coming into play here. First, the brain mistaking its own representations, its own ideas and ideals for the real. In other words, the noumenon for the phenomenon, the word for the action. Now also must soften the awareness further by detaching it from the apparent from the appearance. So the world becomes twice removed. First, it is mistaken for the mental representation of it. And then this representation is denied relevance, turning the real to some fantastic ambiguity that can be anything and everything. And because it can be anything and everything, it most likely would be what is preferred by the majority. Perspectivism becomes a defensive mechanism where every perspective is equally uh, valid because the absolute gnosis is impossible. Therefore, uh, absolute ignorance is used as a defensive, as an argument. Community is important here, much more than it was in primal states, because now the individual's entire self-worth his, her entire perception or reality is dependent on the support and validation of a majority who also believe in the exact same mythologies and who in conjunction maintain the cocooning 
solipsism of modern institutional living, and yet they consider themselves unique and individuals and special and too complex to understand because the senses have lost all relevance except for directing the will in accordance to prescribed behaviors within a fabricated environment emotion is proposed as the alternative alternative sensation emotion because after the initial sensual simulation the automated response which is what emotion is takes over to direct the individual's thinking and behaving it is because this traumatic response can be easily directed and recalibrated that it must be preserved as the preferred first response, the first impression, usurping reason or afterthought or hindsight or forethought. The individual must be trained to become an animal in its thinking in his or her conceptualizations and judgments, living in the moment, as it were, finding meaning and purpose in the immediate, the materialistic, the hedonistic, in what comes easy and requires no thinking, in other words, no effort, the path of least resistance. This automat automatization is easily to submit to and to train educate, in other words, into the individual brain when you use its natural predispositions such as fear, hunger, sexual desire, or any emotion or, or sensation already present in the organism because of evolution, such as the desire to take the path of least resistance. A return to reality would be a return to the understanding that language is symbolic an art form representing the real, not being it, not substituting for it. Reality is fluid, yet language uses static forms and representations, and all, as all art does. A return to the admission that man may not know all, the absolute something, but neither does he know nothing, the absolute nothing, and that what he does know is always changing, so it requires constant reaffirmation. Once the absolute has taken out, has been taken out of the picture, the man returns to his natural state of conceptions, of being, of becoming, no longer guided by some thou shalt imperative of universal authority, but now guided by an innate, natural, understanding of self in relation to time because man is after all a temporal being he can now identify with his past his heritage his ancestors his nature in other words in this past which he is no long no more than a manifestation of he finds all that he requires to guide him through existence purpose meaning direction a sense of, lo of longing, of belonging to a continuum, a mission, a feeling of love, gratitude, duty towards all those who contributed to his presence, a presence which he loves through himself and pays homage. He pays homage to by living in accordance with their traditions, which he loves by continuing their, her their lineage, by having children, and by having children, by re reaffirming life. Because having children is a form of self-love, an arrogant, selfish form of self-love. And we know how arrogance and ego has been slandered in our time, how it's been debased and made into a sin, so, so as to uh, comfort the, the simpletons, the weaklings, the cowards, the base, the genetic feces, the self-hating, world-denouncing simpletons who would rather hide and bitch and complain and cast aspersions and blame everyone rather than take responsibility for their own becoming as a continuance of what has preceded them, no longer affect such minds of nobility, because that's what nobility is, 
It has nothing to do with wealth. Even the concept of nobility has been has been overtaken by modern definitions. Stoicism is their spiritual awaken, awakening to strive for the best, yet to yet be ready to accept the worst as a necessary risk, a prerequisite for the gift of existing. In nihilism, we find the enemy, the infection, the nematic disease, degrading, sickening, debasing us in our bloodlines to the point where we stop wanting to live as human beings, as men, but dream of assimilating with a machine, a machinery, such as an institution. The desire to escape the past expresses itself as a desire to correct, to correct it and its end results by using prosthetics, by using technologies and techniques to erase the past and morph it into something we can at least tolerate. The past, what has already, already been decided for us, is the enemy for these nihilists who now redefine themselves as progressives, as liberals, as libertarians, when all they are are hope addicts. Hope for them is both a medicine to deal with fear, but also a way of escaping and forgetting the past, the past that they cannot escape nor accept. They would rather gamble on the next card than deal with the hand they were already dealt. This, and only this, is the dis-ease infecting European man, infecting the Indo-European Aryan bloodline. Not a specific people, because they are not, they are no more than carriers of this infection, this virus. Lepers, zombies, to be avoided but not hated. Nietzsche was anti-anti-Semitic for this very reason. To hate those who define validation, identity in being hated, in being the world's victims, is feeding this disease with new blood. It is a way of feeding into the context, the paradigm, which this this ease needs to stay alive. The noble spirit, the masculine spirit, does not hate his enemy. He does not hate the virus because it helps him stay healthy. It defines him as that which he is not, as that which he refuses to be, as that which he denies, even if it means his death. The noble mind, the masculine spirit, is grateful to this disease, this virus, this otherness, for being exactly what it is. Because by, by being what it is, it helps him determine what he wishes to be, other than.